Lubu Tadaka, Executive Director of the International Energy Agency. What would you say is the forecast for uh, energy supplies within the next uh, 10, 20 years? Well, yes, we have, uh, uh, let's say, publicized many documents uh, relating to that. The most recent one is called Energy Technology Perspective 2010. And uh, we analyze if the, the, the world is aiming at CO2 emission reduction by half, what are the potential uh, technologies necessary to achieve this? So we calculated energy efficiency, renewable sources, nuclear or carbon capturing and storage, or transportation sector change like electric vehicle, etc. And uh, we think that most important uh, areas for these technologies efficiency. Energy efficiency can't account for, for example, 38% of the necessary reduction from the business as usual to the uh, kind of trajectory toward halving the CO2 emission by 2050. On top of that, we have about 40 some percent of the decarbonizing the power sector, either by carbon capturing and storage, or nuclear power, or renewable energy sources. But still, this is not enough to achieve having the CO2 emission. Electric vehicle or fossil, uh, let's say, uh, decarbonizing the transportation sector is necessary. But this part, electric vehicle or fuel cell vehicle, this is the most expensive part of the investment, in fact. So we. In, in the conclusion, what we say to achieve these uh, climate change challenges, uh, we need all options and total additional investment from business as usual to this uh, halving scenario, we call it blue map scenario, is 46 trillion US dollars from now to 2050. So trillions of dollars are going to be needed uh, to be invested in this uh, sector. Mm -hmm. Where's the money going to come from? From private sector. It is private All investment. private sector. Mostly, mostly private sector. It's government spending is much, much, very small part of it. Seed money on the re renewable or seed money for the new technologies. Yes, it's uh, government money, but actually it's a very small part. Probably 90% of the money comes from private sector as an investment. For example, in, out of these 46 trillion, half of the money is in the transportation sector. It's a purchasing new type of vehicles, electric vehicle or for, uh, fuel cell vehicle or plug-in hybrid, or, uh, you, you name these advanced vehicles should be purchased. It's not R&D on these vehicles. It's a purchasing these vehicles is the additional investment. Half means uh, 23 trillion additional money is, should be spent then. It's not government buying these vehicles. Of course, some part, yes, but it's basically private investment. And uh, for the other part, yes, important part is power sector. But power sector means it's private investment to the new uh, power generation like renewable sources or nuclear or carbon capturing storage. Yes, the government plays a certain role of encouraging this investment as the tax incentives or incentives for, for the uh, renewable sources like uh, feed-in tariffs, etc. But these uh, are a part of it, but very small part of it. A lot of business people would be looking at this interview and wondering where they should be focusing right now. Where would you put your money? Well, they have to uh, uh, focus on what is happening uh, globally, but especially in emerging economy like China, where the China is heading. Um, and they are investing in, in the renewable energy sources, nuclear, wind, solar, uh, electric vehicle. So the future of the, uh, uh, let's say, expanding market is there. So, so what kind of technology prevails in, in this market? What kind of transportation method prevails in this market? Decide the global uh, industrial activities. So focusing on this, uh, well, actually that is happening, but in the energy sector too, what happens in these economies is a key for the future competitiveness or industrial activities.
When I was doing the research into this uh, before coming here to do the interview, mm -hmm. one phrase that crops up time and time again is no silver bullet. Mm -hmm. True. True across the board. True across the board, yes. I mean, uh, we can, uh, we are saying all the uh, technological revolution is necessary in everywhere, in, in, in energy efficiency areas, renewable, nuclear, CCS, all these uh, uh, technologies necessary. That's what uh, we say. But also we can say that to achieve this CO2 emission reduction, the China is using coal because it's abundant uh, and uh, cheap. So how to make uh, China uh, into the clean coal uh, paradigm is key. And to make that happen, certainly carbon capturing and storage technology is probably very important to achieve this. Without this technology, probably CO2 emission reduction by half is simply impossible. In terms of carbon trading and pricing, is it possible to get some sort of standardized system internationally? It is possible, but it, we need the uh, international agreement on the carbon uh, trading or carbon capping, cap and trade. So global agreement is, is basis to make this global system. Of course, regional system can uh, happen without global agreement. Or already Europe is uh, testing uh, this approach. Because at the moment Europe will be thinking that it's paying the lion's share and Asia is getting off somewhat lightly. Well, but China is also considering uh, what kind of mechanism is useful. So they are preparing for the future uh, introduction of this kind of mechanism. US, uh, certainly uh, the new legislation of comprehensive climate energy bill is necessary to do that. But also, U.S. is using more the regulatory mechanisms through EPA, and, and that is more implicit pricing rather than explicit pricing. But uh, when, where there's some kind of cap uh, happens, maybe regional or bilateral uh, coordination or credit uh, purchasing may happen. So gradually, this kind of linkage may. Uh, expand into the other part of the world and may e eventually evolving into the global system is always very possible. There's a lot of skepticism about climate change right mm -hmm. now. Where do you stand on this? I think it is a working assumption. How rapidly we are moving to other target is another question. And uh, are we getting in time for the real reduction of the CO2 uh, without creating a uh, disaster? That is an interesting question. But Generally speaking, uh, we called for so-called energy technology revolution two years ago with this uh, energy technology perspective one version away. And uh, we are observing lots of green shoots or historic transition so-called is happening in the renewable technologies. Photovoltaic uh, was installed in 2009 about 6 gigawatt. We need 46 gigawatt, by the way, to achieve this hubbing. We know that electric vehicle companies are now announced by each different countries. We totaled it into 8 million vehicles may come in 2020. We need 100 million, by the way, in 2050. So these changes are happening. We think that is because the companies, countries, or governments are thinking this is happening. But you have said recently, you've been quoted as saying that mm -hmm. governments are moving very slowly True. on the energy issue. Well, yes, because uh, the energy efficiency is a low-hanging fruit and cost-effective way. But sadly, uh, you know, it's, the speed is not enough. Uh, so we uh, recommended very detailed uh, you know, items in the uh, areas of lighting, areas of uh, housing sector or transportation sector. So we always encourage uh, countries and governments being more, let's say, uh, robust and en uh, encourage them to take better action or more stricter standards, etc. But uh, I think. Uh, uh, it is happening. Uh, it is clear that 
uh, country like India uh, established a so-called uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency and issuing l labeling for the many appliances and uh, actually, you know, uh, it is a very strong priority area for the government to do. China set up the targets of improving energy uh, efficiency or reducing energy intensity by 20% in five years, and that they are almost achieving. So I think, yes, we need mu much more, but uh, they, uh, in, even in these emerging economies, it is happening because we think that yes this helps for the climate change mitigation but at the same time for these countries of huge emerging economies this means much better energy security energy security is doing something for yourself while climate change is doing same thing for somebody else so convincing the public energy security argument make good sense and for that they know they have to do it. Otherwise, we have already experienced that oil price will move up to $147 if these countries do not take these actions. So are you an optimist or is this something that keeps you awake at night? Well, uh, <laughs> wake, wake up night, but at the same time, we are cautiously optimistic. That's what we are saying. On the other hand, in the Copenhagen, yes, countries made an accord and pledge of some uh, reductions. We summarized that add up all these measures, it means about 70% of the necessary level of reduction in 2020. So 70% is quite significant. But at the same time, real reduction must happen after 2020 to, to our 2030 or 4050. And cost or investment is much larger there. Are we ready to move into that direction? Certainly, uh, you know, we need much, much more effort. And the target year of 2050 is coming closer and closer. So it is getting more and more difficult. That is true. But uh, in innovation, new technologies, you know, these green shoots happening, we have to be uh, encouraging that direction as much as possible. Nobuo Tanaku of IEA, thanks for joining us. You're most welcome. Thank you.